Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to 3AI Infotech Q2 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Asha Gupta from ENYIR. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Lizanne. Good evening to all of you. Welcome to Q2 FI24 earnings call of 3i Infotech Limited. The results and investor presentation have already been mailed to you and you can also view it on our website at www.3iinfotech.com. To take us through the results today and to answer your questions, we have top management of 3i Infotech Limited represented by Thompson Graham, Managing Director and Global CEO, Sachs Krishna, Chief Operating Officer of Value Business, Shushant Purushan, Chief Revenue Officer of uh, India Business Reason, Harish Sinoy, Chief Operating Officer, Professional Services and Chief Risk Officer, Sanjay Rava, Chief Financial Officer, Mohan T.S., Chief Human Resources Officer, and Varika Rasogi, Company Secretary and Head Legal. Thompson will start the call with the business update, which will be then followed by Shashant, who will provide an update on India Business. After that, SACS will provide the update on the value business and Nure Bharat Railtail project, and then we will open the floor for Q&A session. As usual, I would like to remind you that anything that is said on this call that reflects any outlook for the future or which can be construed as forward-looking statement must be viewed in conjunction with the risk and uncertainties that we face. These risks and uncertainties are included but not limited to what we have mentioned in the prospectus filed with SEBI and subsequent annual reports that you can find it on our website. With this, I will now hand over the floor to Thompson. Over to you, Thompson. Thank you, Asha. Good morning and good evening to everybody and my greetings to all of you. Uh, we are happy to uh, report that uh, your company has uh, taught a revenue of uh, 210 crores, uh, which is a growth of 8.2% uh, quarter on quarter, maybe 0.7 percent year on year. Uh, this is a, a gradual progress which we have made, and also at a, 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 a positive a PBT of 26.4 crores uh, before the exceptional item, which I will touch upon it actually. The H1 revenue stood at uh, 404 crores, and uh, we are in course uh, for our annual projections uh, we have made. And uh, this is also a year on year growth of 13.6%. Uh, with the backdrop of the headwinds, uh, uh, your company is uh, making steady headway, uh, though they are very really challenging economic scenarios, uh, especially in our uh, uh, major markets like the US. Uh, we are still holding ground. And uh, we have been uh, uh, steadily, in, uh, you know, uh, uh, slowly uh, growing our businesses. And our challenger and our disruptor model is starting to uh, pay uh, a way for it because as customers are looking to optimize their cost, uh, they are seriously looking at challenges like us and see if we can take up uh, more business from our larger peers. Uh, if we look at the, some of the other quick updates, uh, or uh, that if you look at it uh, for, uh, we have uh, logged in almost uh, 35 new logos uh, in the uh, quarter which has gone by, which is a good progress where we have uh, initiated uh, new logos with uh, multiple, uh, you know, uh, uh, new customers have been uh, brought on board. It has also helped us, uh, you know, open, uh, open multiple opportunities uh, with them. Uh, uh, I will not get into the details of uh, the value business and uh, uh, enterprise business in India region, uh, Shushant and uh, Sachs can ex uh, uh, expand on it. The key other uh, uh, important aspects which I want to touch upon also is that we have made some very strategic partnerships 
uh, with uh, InsurMo for insurance and Databricks. Uh, these are very important partnerships for us, uh, which will help us uh, complement the capabilities with these partners and also uh, uh, make us ready for uh, the newer markets which we want to expand. And the, uh, we also received the Gartner coverage in the market guide for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure uh, Managed Services Specialist. And also cloud services uh, in insurance is a big matrix assessment as well. So these two are uh, uh, a, a, a remarkable achievements for our uh, teams in the hard work. The last two years, we have been able to uh, uh, get these uh, uh, get into the chart now uh, reports because they're very important for us and this is a great enabler for us uh, to drive business. Uh, we are also recognized as a um, um, to application testis, uh, testing services vendor worldwide in the market guide for uh, uh, testing services as well. So uh, these are uh, some of the key uh, headlines. And also our future tech business uh, is uh, progressing and in the, they are uh, released their uh, new uh, products and platforms, uh, which is also creating uh, a lot of interest, uh, especially in the uh, CEO corporate and the CXO DSS, uh, where we have also been able to get uh, new customers and revenue, and the potential of this also is being evaluated as, uh, by uh, Gartner as a potential. Uh, uh, it is not just prescriptive and express traction, could be even possibly a digital twin or twin simulation is where it is being explored. Uh, coming back finally uh, into the, uh, before I hand it over to my uh, colleagues, uh, if you look at the, uh, just to expand on uh, the, as part of an ongoing effort, uh, to build good governance, uh, uh, impairment has been carried out, which is a uh, activity which we do quarter on quarter for our uh, U.S. subsidiary, uh, uh, VIP, and uh, we have been uh, 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 this uh, goodwill which has been in our books for quite some time now. It's uh, our whole legacy uh, uh, beyond our uh, pre-carval times, and uh, after the uh, impairment testing. Uh, a non-cash impairment charge of totally uh, uh, 179.6 crores has been recorded for this quarter. Uh, this is a very positive uh, way forward in, as we are building uh, good governance uh, for the organization, and we are also resetting our baselines and benchmarks in uh, critical geographies like U.S., uh, where we want to build on this uh, one-time cleanup we have taken. And uh, so this is a very uh, positive step uh, which we have taken after a very careful uh, assessment of uh, the uh, evaluation of uh, uh, this uh, facility. Yeah. So uh, coming back uh, uh, to this, uh, probably what I will do is I will uh, pause here and uh, uh, let's have more time for questions. So I'll probably hand over the mic to uh, Shushant. Uh, good evening. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, myself, Sushant, here. Uh, uh, first of all, thanks, Thompson, for providing the update and uh, the QT overview of us. Uh, I just run with you what we have done uh, this quarter for enterprise business. So enterprise business, predominantly, we have two business lines. One is the our digital infrastructure services business and our business process also being business today. Uh, compared to Q1 to Q2, we have grown... Uh, uh, approximately 16% quarter to quarter. Uh, that's the substantial growth because we acquired uh, some good customers in Q1. Now that has given our good revenue. Uh, the customers like uh, IDFC First Bank, we got a data center order from, Oric, uh, from uh, Indian Oil Corporation and a couple of uh, mid-sized customers as well. So that helps us uh, to grow the business by 16% uh, quarter on quarter. And this will improve further as well because these are the long-term entity contracts. Just me, let me share with you other updates uh, on enterprise services point of view. Uh, in last quarter, we have added some seven uh, new customers uh, in Q2 itself. Uh, that Those are all, all the long-term entity contracts. Uh, we have gone live uh, seven customers in Q2, uh, including IDFC First Branch, Bajaj Electrical. Uh, we have gone with gone live with uh, from the big size of the Bhagujivan Financial, which is going to be one of the significant deals. And also we have gone for a two cloud deal like Bata India and Kevin Care. So those going to help us. We have added find it people net uh, uh, in Q2, uh, which is a quite significant. But the, the important point here is the per person realization, revenue realization is significantly higher than the last year. 
our uh, uh, our focus and realizations was improved by 45% because we have uh, focused into to the high value services in enterprise services business. That's something that great for us. We also focused on uh, improving the DSO because that's uh, very important. So more and more private customers, so that we will look forward the improvement of the DSO. That's something we worked on. That uh, that's the overall picture on that. So uh, going forward, this really helps us for Q3 because since these contracts have now become stable and uh, we have got some good visibility as well, uh, we expect uh, Q3 is also uh, going to be do well. Uh, in the similar, uh, uh, you know, at least uh, double-digit uh, growth in the Q3. And uh, we look forward to uh, CSAT improvement from all the customer side as well. So that's uh, a brief update from my side uh, with respect to enterprise services. Hello? Should we open up for questions? No, I think we'll have facts, updates about uh, value business and AI about metrics. Hello, good afternoon, good morning, everyone across the globe. Uh, thanks, Thompson. Thanks, Sushant, for uh, uh, for a good update. Uh, let me give uh, a brief update on our value business unit, uh, which is the unit we've been investing in terms of building capabilities and getting new solutions to the market, which are uh, digital, digitally ready, cognitive enabled, and cloud uh, cloud uh, aligned. Um, as Thompson mentioned, we are finding the creative opportunities in our market despite the headwinds. Um, pipeline is growing, which is indicated by new logo acquisitions that we mentioned. Our investments in build are equally being accepted by industry analysts, as Thompson mentioned, as well as in the, in, by customers, especially in the areas of testing, cloud, and cognitive search kit solutions. We also started our industry focus. Besides BFS, which we have born out of, we born of a bank, we started our industry focus on the insurance, which is also gaining quick traction with close to probably 10 million in revenue. From insurance clients across the globe, across our different solutions and business units. Um, our application analytics in business is also growing and continues to be a largest contributor for a value business, um, followed by cloud and followed by uh, other business units, especially future tech. Uh, moving on quickly to uh, to our uh, other venture with uh, Railtel called New Ray Bharat Network. Um, we are now at a position where we have completely implemented the tech stack. Uh, which is required for you to for, for us to be able to monetize the Wi-Fi platform. And we are open for business and, uh, and the traction is quickly building both in terms of three segments, large uh, public sector undertakings, uh, which have large marketing budgets and we are able to attract them to come on the platform. Uh, we are in close in advanced conversations with a few, uh, hopefully to be able to announce it in the, in the next meeting, hopefully. Uh, the second area is our enterprise uh, customers, our existing pre-I customers, which is which is a quite a rich client base that we have, uh, are also uh, accepting this proposition and uh, and coming on the platform to place advertisements. The third segment is retail, uh, which is a which is a quite a large segment to reach, but we have found a model to to reach and cover the retail segment that is also gaining traction quickly. So we hope to have this venture produce um, quite, quite, quite significant results in the coming months. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll end my uh, brief update here and wait for questions later. I'll pass the microphone on to Harish Shanoi. Oh, no, sorry. Thank you. Pass it on to Asha. Uh, Mr. Harish, we are unable to hear you. Hello? Yeah, I heard you. Uh, Mr. Harish, we are not able to hear you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we seem to have lost the audio from the line of Mr. Harish. Please stay connected while we reconnect Mr. Harish. I think we can open up the floor for questions, Asha, uh, maybe. Sure. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, 
May I please press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants request the youth handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Divya Daga from Widget Global Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. I have few couple of questions. My first question is regarding the clarity of a real deal. So, so the amount given of 4.5 crore uh, below the operating EBITDA, is it uh, the amount we are paying to Railtel as a share or is it a product development cost? Uh, so just to clarify this, uh, this is part of the contractual uh, you know, commitments because the contract says that we have a minimum guarantee of uh, 14 crores uh, per annum or 40% uh, of the revenue which we generate, which is higher. So this is a provision which we make every quarter towards that effect, actually. Okay, okay. Uh, my next question this is... Because right can... now our revenues are just started uh, coming in because it's a, a project where obviously the first uh, six months we take time in building the platforms and product and now it is ready and now the revenues are starting to come in. Uh, so we make these provisions uh, in, in alignment with that. So, are we expecting how much of revenue from this? Yeah, maybe I will probably, I will summarize, but the facts, do you want to probably uh, give us a stand update on the uh, the revenue funnel? Because this could be a common question anyway. Absolutely. Like I mentioned before, I think uh, we have just finished the tech stack, which was, the, which was by design, um, that it takes some time before you open for business, and we are, and we are, uh, like I mentioned before, public sector undertakings, enterprises, and retail. Uh, we have a healthy pipeline. Uh, or, you know, we have a uh, we have a great season coming up, both Diwali as well as as well as Christmas and New Year, where advertisements will increase. So we are hoping to see a see a uptick in the in the demand beyond the normal sustained business development that we would do. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, my next question is: Can you provide me the timeline for the settlement of rupees thirty-five thousand ninety-nine two lakh receivables and one lakh six thousand six hundred thirty-nine of payables? So when we will be able to settle this down? So uh, Sanjay, uh, so this is part of our existing, you know, uh, what we have applied to. For a set talk with RBS, it's an old matter. It's the old, uh, you know, payables from India and receivables to India, and this, we have approved to RBI for uh, set talk uh, outstanding. So we should be able to hear from them, uh, you know, by early next quarter. Okay. And I have one more question. In consolidated results, we have a forex gain of 45 crore in this quarter, and 6.1 in, six, and also a little amount in last quarter. So, can you provide me the clarity of uh, is it a regular gain or is it a accounting adjustment we are doing? So uh, it's not an adjustment, ma'am. Uh, see, what happens is what, we have two elements of foreign currency translation. This is a foreign currency translation that, that happens uh, due to our overseas receivables uh, in India. Now, we have two components in this, this quarter. One is uh, due to uh, we had a share application money from one, at least from India, to a step-down subsidiary, uh, which got subscribed. Uh, and due to that, we had a, a currency uh, gain. That is the one-time part of it, uh, and the second one is uh, on on the rupee. Uh, if the rupee depreciates in India, we get that element of exchange gain uh, in uh, in rupees for overseas outstanding. So that is the second element uh, that we have. So these two put together is 45. But to answer the point, this is not re uh, regular. Uh, but we going forward also don't see such a, such a big amount coming into our books uh, in the coming of quarters. Okay, okay. Just last question. Uh, what is our ideal EBITDA margin for next two to three years? And what will be the revenue for target for this year? 
uh, I'll take that question. Uh, so one is uh, uh, we are definitely on a conservative outlook. Uh, we will, uh, you know, uh, hit our numbers, which is told earlier, which is around 820 crores, uh, without uh, upsurge from uh, Railtel, because that will be an additional uh, top line for us, and also it will contribute to the bottom line uh, for us, because we are anyway providing for the cost in our current PNL. Okay, that is one. Uh, the second to your question is, uh, ideally, uh, with uh, as we are trying to change the mix, because 80% of the business, which is uh, uh, still in our own legacy or run uh, models, and 2025 to the value business is changing. Uh, it will gradually change, but I think uh, what we are targeting is, uh, uh, you know, uh, mid single digit uh, PBT and you know uh, higher single digit EBITDA is where uh, we are sh targeting in the short term. Uh, to your question. Okay, thank you so much. What is the next question? That is from the line of Pratap Maliwal from Mount Infra Finance. Please go ahead. Mr. Pratap Maliwal, your line is in the dog mode. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, and uh, thanks for taking my question. So I just wanted to ask this quarter, we've had a strong increase in the indirect cost, and that seems to have gone uh, mainly in the VBU segment. So what is this indirect cost component? And uh, from Q1 to Q2, it's, it's almost doubled. So what, what is the reason for that? So uh, this is primarily due to, you know, we had this increase in, uh, due to the increments that got affected in Q2. That is one element. And uh, secondly, uh, we have uh, some projects wherein uh, we, we have started the new projects. And uh, those projects, uh, we have sign offs coming in the coming quarters. So those uh, costs have come, but we don't see that kind of uh, in the cost to go up uh, going forward. Yeah, okay. because uh, we also, some of these projects, uh, to your question, uh, we uh, over invest yeah, because some of the new deals we invest up front. Uh, some of these costs. Uh, the second, also, if you look at it, uh, the entire, um, you know, uh, uh, cost of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 new projects uh, such as uh, rail -tail operation operating costs, all this are pre-booked here uh, right now. Okay. But, sir, the intel cost, and that instrument cost are given a separate line item in the business summary. So how do we reconcile with that? Yeah, yeah, fair point. So what is there in the separate is that we have called out the NG for uh, minimum guarantee for uh, uh, what do I say, to rail tell in that line. But other operating costs which are there as part of the operations, which is right now uh, funding it. And then once the revenues are uh, kicking in, it will move out of this cost. That is one. Second, also, as like what Sanjay said, there are some transitional costs on the new business which is coming in. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you. And now uh, there's another cost I can call PBD in the uh, business summary. So what is that, uh, Alu? Uh, so that's a provision for uh, doubtful debts. Uh, we have we go as per the policy of the company, wherein if certain receivables uh, get stretched beyond a certain point in time for collection. These are primarily the government projects collection, which you know kind of get abated, and uh, we expect. Uh, you know, most of that to get collected back uh, in future. But as a good, pro, you know, prudence and as per uh, the government, as, as per the policy guidelines for the company, we take that provision in the books. Okay, understood. And just one more thing regarding our reclassification of revenue. So, till now, we've uh, had a business in the form of the run and the grow business. So, my understanding was, that I'm just trying to reconcile it with our current classification. So, the run business... Yes, yes. Uh, now, just refers to the ES and the PS. Is that the run business that we had and the volume, uh, the, no, or the no, volume business? No, absolutely. Absolutely. No, spot on. I'm, I'm really happy that <laughs> you've been uh, following us so closely. You're spot on. Uh, so, the run business is what uh, we inherited uh, post Carlo, uh, the lines of businesses and what has been doing. So, predominantly, if you look at it, the entire professional services business and almost close to 75% of the ES business uh, will be the run. 
the value business and some portions of uh, uh, next generation digital infrastructure management and other stuff which Sushan does comes part of the growth. Uh, so in, you're absolutely right. Uh, okay, okay. And uh, just one last thing I wanted to understand regarding our uh, heading policy, I think we were supposed to put in place a heading for, uh, policy. Is there any update on that? So, we are, uh, the heading policy is under getting framed. Uh, we should be able to get the policy done by Q3. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot for taking my question. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Sanjay, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, good evening. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Good. Uh, yeah. So good to see a, a big jump in the revenue for the Q2 and uh, in this challenging environment I mean, compared, compared to other companies which are really struggling. So it's great to see that and congratulations to your team. Wonderful work there. Uh, uh, we are seeing that the Im negative impact on the uh, bottom line. Mostly the gross margins are reduced on IMS and cloud first. So are we seeing, uh, what are the reasons for that? And are we seeing the uh, margins will improve in Q3 and Q4 going forward? Yes, Sanjay. I think uh, these are all interlinked. If you look at it, a lot of new businesses come in these areas. Uh, so we have taken in a lot of, uh, you know, setup costs and transition costs and upfront costs which are there. And uh, so most of the revenue extraction for the cost incurred, uh, you will start seeing that coming in uh, Q3 and Q4. Oh, that's, that's great. Uh, uh, on the, the Railtail side, uh, when are we seeing the Railtail project will go, will have a break-even or uh, start being profitable? Are we seeing in this financial year? So definitely, Sanjay, because uh, uh, what I would uh, probably acknowledge is that uh, we were... Uh, because of the, the technology and the dependencies is pretty high. You know, probably we were late by three months. Uh, but I think now we have a good handle on the entire platform technology and uh, uh, I would call it a hybrid digital strategy. Uh, so definitely uh, we are just waiting for some two, three large breakthroughs. If that happens, you know, break even happen very quickly. Um, otherwise, definitely I think we want to at least cover our costs uh, 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 at least the MG cost has to be covered for us, uh, Sanjay. That's our first uh, milestone because we are anyway booking those costs in our current PNL, and uh, it's, it's also, also stressful for us uh, with, with our limited, uh, you know, capital which we have. Uh, so it's very important that we break through with that as a step one. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and another question is about uh, the, uh, the the big bills. I mean, are we seeing that the big bills are getting closed, or uh, it is uh, only the smaller deals are getting closed? I mean, are we uh, how the business scenario now? Uh, is it improving compared to Q2 and Q1? So, uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, thoughts. I was going to I was going to make a comment and then uh, I'll go after you. No, no, go ahead, Sack, then I can summarize. So, 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 absolutely. So, we're seeing a mixed, uh, in different verticals, actually. The behavior is slightly different. I don't think there's a single pattern. Uh, like I mentioned before, like some you actually appreciate it, our revenue is taken on uptick even I expect to competition because we're able to find the transformative deals. And those are happening in not large monolithic deals. There are a few, and we have our share of those big deals, and we hope to announce them. Uh, but there are lots of mid-sized deals which are happening because these are digital transformation projects which are being taken up by the order of preference, like customer-facing, um, uh, supplier-facing, not so much mid-office. Mid so there are a lot of, lot of these digital transformation projects that are happening in the marketplace, and we seem to have a fair share of attraction towards those. Oh, sure. Yeah, and um, also, uh, uh, slightly strategically, Sanjay, see that uh, sometimes uh, that's why we are also trying to figure out, uh, even in uh, the Western markets like US and UK, uh, there is definitely a potential for, uh, you know, an opportunity for customers where uh, they are looking for serious uh, cost reduction uh, from the current uh, suppliers, and some of the contracts are coming up for renew. So where we are now trying to participate and, you know, try and see if we can, you know, uh, win some of those deals as well. But to your point, I think the run rate deals are increasing. Uh, smaller deals are coming in. 
uh, very systematically. If you see, there are a lot of new logos we have signed up. It could be small, it could be 100K, 150K, 50K, uh, but that at least gives us a foot in the door. The second also is that uh, we are also making a huge uh, reconnect program like what Saks told about some of our uh, old existing customers uh, where we are not expanded. We were uh, with only one line of business. Uh, but all, all of them have their own perception of our capabilities because they have been with us for some time. But now over a period of time, they are slowly starting to trust us with new lines of businesses because that is very important because that will expand uh, with existing customers also. So those are the kind of positives uh, green shoes which are happening. Oh, that, that's great. Uh, and uh, I have a question about this uh, product and platform, like HTAG, Feature Take, and Campus Lab. So, so how are we seeing attraction now in the market? Are we seeing that deals are getting close in this area? Yeah, absolutely, because uh, New Year Future Tech uh, has been extremely successful because um, all the products, especially our CXO corporate, CEO, DSS, all of them are uh, moved beyond MVP to commercial grade right now. Uh, we are having paying customers. And now we are into the stage where we are getting industry orientation of these products which we have developed. So, for example, utilities and gas in India, we have got that. We are work, working on healthcare uh, for uh, UK. We are working for uh, credit unions in uh, US. Uh, so those, that is now uh, becoming even more uh, better. And individually also, these companies are uh, gaining a lot of attention. Uh, as you remember, uh, we said that each of them will be independent companies which will create independent value. And uh, uh, there's a lot of interest for these uh, products and platforms and where we want to also uh, start filing our patents and IP also towards that and see how we can monetize it. Uh, so that is happening for Nure Future Tech. And uh, Nure Edge Tech also has been uh, <coughs> moving very uh, uh, fine because we, we developed on our 5G labs, IoT, SD-WAN, uh, SASE. Uh, SASE, we have already have paying customers, uh, and that is now expanding. We are now trying to uh, get into... Uh, uh, you know, contracts with uh, uh, telcos who want to take it to the customer. We are on the initial stages. We spoke about it last time also. Uh, so that's positive. And uh, in fact, we are starting to uh, uh, participate in 5G lab uh, setups uh, programs as well. Uh, hoping to see some success there uh, because there are a lot of contracts coming both in government as well as in private areas on 5G lab setup. Uh, SD WAN, we have already implemented a uh, few customers as well, and we are now trying to uh, ramp up that in the Nure Edge Tech. And the third is Nure Campus Lab. Again, Nure Campus Lab, uh, we are creating a creating a, a SaaS platform. Uh, we have already some uh, paying customers. Now we are trying to make it US and UK. Uh, typically focused on uh, you know uh, mid segment uh, education universities, uh, and who are looking to replace their old uh, PeopleSoft, Oracle, and things like that. So that's the uh, update on these three Nure companies. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for that. My last question is about uh, the cash uh, part. Uh, it was discussed last time about the Washi property. Is it something uh, 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 the property is already uh, uh, is uh, given on the use for someone or uh, any plans you're having for using the cash? Yeah, see, uh, cash is a very big important uh, problem for us, for the company, because we have to monetize these assets. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, fueling our... Uh, growth uh, strategies will become a difficulty as we've been talking. Uh, right now, I think uh, we are in advanced, uh, you know, uh, discussions with some NDFCs and some bankers. Finally, uh, where we could probably uh, use the uh, uh, washi property to support us with the working capital limits and other uh, uh, facilities. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, wishing you all the best. Uh. Hey, thanks, Sanjay. Thanks a lot for your support. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star in one. Participants of the conference, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star in one. If there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. 
thank you. Uh, you know, thank you, uh, Asha. Uh, so, uh, thanks a lot uh, uh, for uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the, the the questions and you know uh, the, the interest and the support you have uh, shown us uh, all this while. And uh, uh, and uh, uh, be rest assured that uh, your management team and the organization, your organization, we are working towards uh, uh, this common goal of uh, creating creating value for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, members of the management team. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of 3i and Fortech Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.